What's going on everybody? My name is Salem Sunni and welcome to my YouTube channel. So on this channel, I focus on two things, faith and entrepreneurship. My goal is to help individuals such as yourself be more motivated, discover your purpose and understand that you are God's very best. If you're new to the channel, consider subscribing. So today I want to talk about a few important principles that can help us in our daily life that are based from a Bible story that I think that you're going to enjoy as well. So the Bible story is actually based out of John chapter 8, verse 1 to 11. You might have heard about this one. This is a story of Jesus just coming back from Mount Olive. So he was at the mountainside with his disciples. He was a teacher, so he spent a lot of his time teaching principles on life, principles on God, the Godly living. So when he's talking to his disciples, Pharisees and other makers of the law didn't like Jesus very much. So as they didn't like him, they wanted to find ways to make him trip up in terms of his perception about the law of the time, his perception about religious uh, ceremonies and rituals, just finding a any type of way they could to make him trip and fall or contradict himself, finding any way they could to kill him. So in this particular instance, the teachers of the law came with a crowd and they brought a woman that was caught in adultery. If you're caught in adultery, the punishment of the law of the time was to be stoned to death. So it was really, really a harsh society at the time. So they bring it in front of Jesus and they were like, they want to know, okay, what do you think about this? And here's the first point that I want to talk about. In life, you're going to be faced with controversy. I don't know in what shame it may come, depending on your life or depending on what you face. Just kind of like Jesus, they wanted to find different ways to try to make him trip and fall just because they hated him. They didn't accept him as the Messiah, as the Son of God. And I think that's also going to be some of us. Most likely it's not going to be as dramatic as, you know, somebody about to get stoned to death or anything like that. But we're going to be faced with controversial situations. We're going to be faced with moments where people are going to test our faith, test our alignment to Jesus, test the fact that are we really serious? as believers do we really have the integrity that we talk about do we really have the faith the wisdom that we often speak on as believers and followers of Jesus we you going to be faced with situations that are going to be controversial that is part of our journey if that happened to the master teacher Jesus himself most likely it's going to happen to some of us in some shape or form during our lifetime so as you continue to read in verse 4 5 and 6 of John chapter 8 you see Jesus response was actually interesting he didn't say anything he didn't acknowledge the fact that they came. On the contrary, what he did is he actually stooped down and started writing things with his finger on the ground. Completely bizarre type of move, right? Just think about this. There's a crowd of men who are angry with stones who are about to stone this woman because she's been caught in adultery, is creating a commotion. Think about this. People who are just passing by just start looking, okay, what's going on over there? There's a gathering, Jesus is involved. Like, what is going on? Right? So it's starting to create a commotion, but Jesus is relaxed as it could be, and he starts to write on the ground, not minding what is going on right now. And I know this might seem weird to talk about but sometime in life you don't want to be distracted by everything that comes right at you remember i just told you that you're going to be facing controversial situation well have the wisdom to stay grounded i know it's a play on word but what i really mean is don't get caught up in the hype don't get caught up in the fact that somebody wants you to take a decision now. Somebody's pushing you into a relationship. Somebody's pushing you into a corner. Somebody, they really want your answer now, 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 now. Calm down. Take a step back. Relax. Analyze the situation. Kind of like what Jesus was doing. He was not paying any attention to what was going on. Right? So sometimes you're going to have some distraction or trying to, you know, come at the side of you. Hey, hey, Salem, what about this? Oh, Salem, what about this? Salem? That's what you're going to do. Like Jesus. Stay focused. Put blinders on. So you don't get distracted by what's going on here, what's going on there. Stay focused to the goal. But as you can imagine, haters do what haters do. What? They don't give up, right? They kept pestering Jesus. They were like, no, Jesus, what do you think about this? You know, what do you think about this particular situation? And just kept pestering, 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 pestering Jesus. And that's another principle, right? Listen, you're going to have to face adversity more than once. That's probably the reality. Do you ever wonder why we face tough time or difficulties or challenges more than just one time is because of the enemy the devil he doesn't give up actually i think the devil is more persistent than some believers than some christians are 
we, we must have some endurance, some more uh, stay in the game type of power. The I will not give up until I win type of power. I will not give up the game. I'm not going to let go. I'm never going to turn back. I'm like we have to have this type of determination that I'm going to see this through the end. So in life, like these Pharisees, which is weird because we're learning lessons from them, they were persistent kept pestering Jesus, kept asking him questions. He didn't acknowledge him the first time. Guess what? They didn't give up. You know, what about you? You know, you wanted to get that loan on your business idea. You you went to the bank and they said, no. Are you going to give up? You talked about your family. Yeah, I'm going to be an entrepreneur. I'm going to do this, right? You sign up for that, you know, network marketing company and you're like, yo, I'm going to sign up everybody. And your family's like, no, that's a scam, a pyramid scheme. We're not going to enter that. Are you going to give up? Right? Are you you not got your real estate license and you have no clients in a year? You've sold no houses, you've shown a couple of houses and no one really wants to sign. Like, are you gonna give up? Or are you gonna stay persistent? Or are you gonna stick to the game? Like, ironically, like this Pharisees, I want you to be persistent to the goals and the things you want in life. You gotta be persistent. You gotta knock on the door more than just once. It's very important. So as we continue in the story, so these guys are just like pastoring Jesus. Like, what do you think about this? You know, now like Jesus is getting annoyed. And then Jesus, you know, stands up and in a classy way, Jesus with all the wisdom, because he understood what they wanted to do. He was very aware of the situation. And Jesus was like, all right, let the one that has never sinned throw the first stone. Yeah, you heard that, right? Jesus was like, let the one that has never sinned throw the first stone. In other words, if you guys are so perfect as you think you are, then yeah, you deserve to try to punish her. So now everybody was like, because Jesus had brought them to a realization that you've sinned too. You're deserving to be stoned as well. Right? How about more forgiveness and grace in this particular situation? And here is another life principle that I want to share. Understanding grace. We're saved by grace. We didn't deserve salvation, but God so loved us that he sent Jesus to come save us. Is it's through His grace, His forgiveness, that we have the chance to be reconciled to the Father and come back into unity with God. And it's through that grace that we also have to be able to share and show the same grace and love to others. You know, I'm not saying that we have to condone sin. No, not at all. But we have to be willing to forgive. God wants us to forgive, to have grace. So, as you can imagine, none of the gods threw the stone because we're all sinners. We're all sinners. You know, it's all the grace of God that really helps us and now we're transforming to children of God. In this particular case, as they were gripped by their own guilt, one by one, they each started leaving. They put their stone down and they just went back into their daily normal life. And then now, it was only Jesus and the woman that was brought who was accused of adultery. She was on the ground. So Jesus looked at her and say, do you even see anyone that is left that is accusing you? She says, no, I don't see anybody. Any of those people who are accusing me are no longer there. And that's what I want to tell you too. When Jesus come into your situation, he's going to take care of those challenges, those difficulties, those people, those haters, those people that are coming against you. Trust in Jesus, trust in God, even for your business, even from the goals you have, the visions, the plans you have. Because when Jesus come, he clears the way. He's your protection. He said, I'll never leave you, never forsake you. I'll be always with you. God is going to walk by you. He said, when you walk through the valley of shadow of death, fear no evil because his staff will protect you. He said, his word will be a lamp to your feet and it will light up your path for you to be able to know where you're going. And the last thing Jesus said was very important. Did even one of them condemn you? She said, no Lord, no one. Now Jesus says, neither do I. Now go and sin no more. Go and sin no more. And I want to end with that, sin no more. See, whenever we receive the grace from God, whenever God is coming into the solution, God wants us to change. So the thing that could have been unfortunate in this particular situation would be for the woman to now as she has received the forgiveness from the Messiah himself, Jesus, would then decide to go back into the lifestyle that brought her in this particular situation. See, Jesus forgave her sin, but asked her to sin no more. Jesus transformed her situation, but asked her to no longer fall into the same trap that brought her into that same condition in the first place. So Jesus is asking some of us, he's forgiven you, he loves you. He wants you to sin no more. Those bad business deals, those shady things you've done to get where you are, 
you know you've, you've done something wrong to achieve maybe you'll get the money you know and you know it's eating at you you can't really sleep well you think you're sleeping well but you have to take all those medication for you to be in the state where you are god said sin no more my son my daughter he loves you and that's my message for you today sin no more that's all i have for you i hope this video was a blessing and if it was make sure to give this a thumbs up and also share it to someone else that might be able to be blessed by this that's all for me i gotta go but remember you are god's very best i'll see you